Morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. As I, I attempted to study this lesson this week, all kinds of distractions come across our path. We had a busy week and uh, we had phone calls, people needing help. We got home from church Wednesday night and uh, we had some friends in from Louisiana and, and he knew we talked to him, he knew we'd go to church. I said, if it's Wednesday or Sunday, you know where we're going to be. And he waited till we, he seemed to come back in. He called me, said, I need some help. And we sat till after midnight before we got back. Same thing Thursday evening. And Thursday evening, we was working on a job. We got stung, eyes swelled up, swelled mm -hmm. shut. And same thing Friday, just went on and on. And, these things are not even worthy to be mentioned, but these are the things that we'll see as we seek to serve the Lord and seek to Amen. study the Word and just uh, try. It's just praise the Lord. He let me see for what it was. I mean, Amen. This morning we'd like to look for a few minutes in uh, Matthew five verse six. surface on this, but we're going to try to bring out what the Lord has given us on this. And, uh, <coughs> Blessed are they which hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they should be filled. Amen. And uh, seems like we don't see a whole lot of that this day and time, especially in our nation with the way things are going and everything going on, but the Lord just... Uh, I read this probably two or three weeks ago, and, and he just keeps bringing it back to me about the shortage of uh, the hunger we see for righteousness in this world today. And mm -hmm. even with those that are called themselves Christians, and it's just, uh, it's not what it used to be. Amen. Yeah, <clears throat> in Matthew 6.33. Is, uh, is really on my mind because uh, 
than young people here today. I wasted a lot of time when I was young, mm -hmm. uh, not being much more than a pew warmer. And, and that was my fault. I had people with a stumble block to me, and uh, if I had the faith that I would have had, I'd have went ahead and done what I needed to do. And, you know, I will answer for what I do, and they will answer for what they do. And uh, it's, uh, it, but like I said, if I'd been, if my faith had been stronger, I would have, you know, I would have done more for the Lord. And, uh, Amen. As, as you get older, it grieves you that, uh, yes, it that you, didn't, you didn't do what you needed to do for the Lord. And uh, these phones that we all have, mm -hmm. several months ago, I, mine just started doing it for some reason. I don't know why, but it give you like a weekly report of what you've done that week. It was really convicting about how much time you spend on this app and that app. And I've got a Bible app on there. I usually carry my Bible with me, but sometimes if I don't have it, I'll use the phone. But it's pretty convicting about how much time you spend on everything else, messaging and everything else, and how much time you spend on the Bible app. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's good that uh, it made me want to do like a, maybe not every day, but an uh, inspection of what you're doing for the Lord, what you're doing with your time, and uh, maybe, you know, every, not every day, but every week, you know, what have I done for the cause of Christ this week? What have I done? You know, how much have I studied? How much have I uh, talked about the Lord? Uh, who have I missed witnessing to? I'm not, uh, I'm not a people person. I'm not uh, really outgoing. So it's a struggle for me, especially when most people are going to shut you down right. right off the bat. But it was a real blessing this week. We met somebody, or I did, and I got to talk to her, and uh, she was really receptive uh, about the word of the Lord and, uh, and told us she knew the Lord, and uh, she knew where she was going. And uh, it, was, it was really a blessing. There's a lot of people we meet this day and time. If they don't shut you down, they'll tell you everything that they're, they've done and everything. But... Uh, as we see in our lesson, they have no real hunger and thirst for the righteousness of the Lord. They yeah, man. Everything else comes first. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we want to look at today. Where, where is our hunger level at? In uh, Psalms 106, verse 3. Keep judgment, and he that does righteousness at all times. Amen. At all times. That says we need to seek to be constant, the same, you know, seek to be the pattern of our Lord, uh, not to just when it's convenient for us or there a lot of people like to put on the show or they like to tell you what you want to hear or show you what you want to see. We need to be uh, steadfast, diligent, mm -hmm. uh, in our service to the Lord and our, in our our hunger for righteousness. I, it's uh, a few years ago, it really depressed me about things going on in this world, but uh, as we see them, we, we know that these things have to come to pass. Right. Coming of our Lord. And uh, and that's the way we would need to look at it. And anything that we uh, are dealing with in our lives, the first thing we need to do is align it with the Lord's Word. And, and what would the Lord have us to do instead of, because uh, the flesh will lead you wrong every time. That's right. Instead of uh, seeking to look good ourselves or, you know, there's somebody asking something, you know, what does the Bible say about it? What, what does the Lord say about it? You know, what do we need to do about it? Not uh, what the flesh will say about it. Right. In Proverbs 14, 34. Exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. Yeah, in our, in our nation today, you know, the Lord has blessed this nation above, above measure throughout the years, and uh, see it in the shape it's in now, it's just uh, nobody has a, well, I wouldn't say nobody, but uh, it's a nation. I hope we just don't see the hungry thirst for righteousness that uh, we'd like to see that uh, even so-called Christians, you know, they'll seem like everything else comes in front of the things of the Lord. Uh, right. Even looking today as we 
crowd at church, you know, the lights full, uh, you know, everybody in the ball game, uh, everything going on, and all that comes first. And then, if there's anything left, that's uh, that's what they get the Lord. Right? There you go. That's not the way it should be. The Lord should come first before all these other things, and uh, strive to seek His will in our life. I'm uh, I'm old enough to remember when I was a kid when we'd have a, a church meeting it was a week long. Before the meeting got there, we'd pray for that we, it would be a revival, that the Lord would move, that His Spirit would move upon the church with the meeting. And I, I'm old enough to remember seeing it, that you know, mm-hmm. souls would be saved and uh, people would yeah. sleep and come back to the Lord and you could feel the, the Spirit of the Lord move and, and they would be there. Nowadays, People get excuse for Sunday services, but Wednesdays, you know, they don't even, it's like they don't even recognize Wednesday services anymore. It's uh, it seems like a thing of a past to them. Lost my place. And even uh, so many churches that just a few years ago was sound have uh, seemed to. They've lost their hunger for righteousness. They, Amen. Their hunger is put in the wrong place. It's uh, it's in numbers. Right. And uh, and whatever it takes to get the numbers there. I, in the past years ago, we've been. I was a member of a church that was things going on that that was not right, and we talked to the pastor about it. Well, we don't have the votes to take care of. It. Mm. Well, it don't matter if we have the votes or not. We we need to deal with what needs to be dealt with. We let one thing slide, then another thing slide. Before you know it, you let the world in the church. And yeah, man. In uh, Proverbs eleven five. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, yeah, and the wicked shall fall by his own devices. If we have this hunger and thirst for righteousness, it tells us here that it will direct his way, it will keep you in the right way to say that we need to be in the set before the Lord, steadfast in our uh, thirst to the Lord and, uh, and, and see the distractions for what they are and not let it uh, take up time that we could be using for the service of the Lord. For righteousness, and we seek to have a uh, live a life in service to the Lord. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You're right. But, uh, Amen. In uh, Proverbs 13, 5. Lying, but the wicked man is lost and, and comes to shame. Amen. Righteousness keepeth keep him in an upright way, but the wickedness is overthrown, overthrown the sin. And then, uh, I never wrote him wrong.
call of prayer for the church of Philippi. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ and to the glory and praise of God. Amen. And that was his prayer for the church there, that they would uh, be sincere, that they would be filled with the fruits of righteousness. And that's, that's what we want to see in our church. We want to be filled. We want to be sincere. We You're want right. to be to the Lord. We want to be diligent in our service to the Lord in, uh, in every day, being guardful and watchful for the things that are going on and the things that seem to take all of our time. In Proverbs 11, 30, Righteous is a tree of life, and he that when the soul is wise. Amen. And uh, that's, uh, I've been praying the Lord to help me in my witnessing because uh, I'm not a real outgoing person, and it's uh, sometimes it's hard to talk to them, especially when they shut you down off the bat. And, uh, but uh, we do see a lot of people, it seems like everybody we talk to that comes to the farm, you know, or, 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 professing Christian, but uh, when you look at what's going on, they, they don't seem to have a whole lot of hunger and thirst for righteousness. Right. They seem to be falling last on their list of things that the Lord come after everything else. In uh, conclusion this morning, we want to just look at our hunger for righteousness and our, our level of hunger, I guess we'd say, for righteousness. You know, we see so many today that uh, they have no desire for the things the Lord is doing. And when you talk to them and you attempt to witness to them, they'll tell you they know the Lord and they tell you that they've been saved, but uh, just looking at their fruit, we don't see very little desire for any of the things of the Lord. Right. And what they do, it's, it comes last after everything else. Uh, and the only thing that you know, we can tell them is, is our pastor reminds us, you know, I just point them to Second Peter 1 10, you know, they can make a call and let you sure that they may not have what they think they have. Right. Because, uh, most churches are going to be careful in, in what they uh, what you hear this day and time. They, they're, they're concerned about the numbers, and uh, but we need to tell them the truth. We need to tell them, you know, what the Lord has to say. Amen. The has to say. And uh, as I study through this lesson, uh, it's been a blessing to me. I hope it's uh, brought something out for you. It's uh, you know makes me to be uh, more watchful of my time and uh, and to and to be hopefully I have a better hunger for the things of the Lord, the things of righteousness, that for His righteousness. And uh, He has done so much for me. And, uh, it makes you aware. It makes me aware of what little that I've done for Him. And uh, we'll conclude with that. Uh, Amen. Amen.